previously. I tried to start a motorbike. That's a system test. And it's a black box test. It's also a subset of both of those. It's a behavioral test, a direct test of a behavior that I, as the user of the motorbike, care about. When my behavioral test failed, I checked for a spark. That's a functional test. No spark, perhaps the battery's flat, or the wiring's faulty, or the spark plug has failed. I won't know until I test the components individually. Checking the spark plug in isolation is an example of a unit test. At this point, the poor old functional test got squeezed out, leaving us with the building blocks of today's main event. In the blue corner, test-driven development. And in the green corner, behavior-driven development. Let's have a good clean fight. Welcome to Development That Pays. I'm Gary Strawn, and today we continue a journey that started three episodes ago. If you missed any of them, you'll find links to them somewhere around this video. Now that we've looked at TDD and BDD individually, it's time for them to go head to head. This bout is scheduled for seven, or perhaps even more, bruising rounds. Round one, focus. Test trim development is an inside out process. It starts with the developer writing a single test and then some code, just enough to get the test to pass. Then the developer writes another test and then some code and so on and so forth. The tests and the code grow and develop together. They're intertwined. The testability of the code is built in, as is the quality. Behavior-driven development, on the other hand, is an outside-in process. The desired behaviors of the finished system, the things that the end user will actually experience, are described up front, and they're described by a set of behavioral tests, all of which can, if desired, be written before a single line of application code. When development begins, the focus, therefore, is on getting the behavioral tests to pass. And since the tests relate directly to the behaviors that the end user will experience, the development focus is actually on delivering value. So if TDD is about doing the thing right, then BDD is about doing the right thing. Round two, writer and reader. Who writes the tests? For unit tests, which are written in code, the answer is clear, it's the developer. For behavioral tests, the almost plain English nature of the test format means that the test can be written by whoever understands the customer best, which is likely to be the product owner or the product owner in conjunction with the development team. Flipping the coin, who is likely to read the tests? Well, for unit tests, it's gonna be a developer, possibly a tester, for behavioral tests, it's almost anyone. Developer, tester, product owner, business owner, stakeholder. I think this round goes to TDD. Round three is speed. Unit testing requires the components are tested in isolation. In many cases, this will necessitate faking or mocking dependencies. This can be the trickiest part of unit testing, but there is an upside to testing in isolation with or without mock dependencies. The upside is that the unit tests tend to be super quick to run. With behavioral tests, we're always testing the system as a whole. The challenge here is putting the system into the correct state in order to be able to run each test. When I say putting the system into state, I'm talking about everything in the context section. This putting the system into state, which might require a whole series of teardown and setup steps, has to happen before each and every test. Not particularly difficult to do, but it can be slow. If a suite of unit tests takes seconds to complete, expect the suite of behavioral tests for the same code base to take minutes to complete. Round four, specificity. Is that a real word? We've covered this area before, so I'll keep it brief. When my motorbike doesn't start, I know that something is wrong, but I don't know what is wrong. When I test a spark plug in isolation and the test fails, I know where the problem is. The problem is with the spark plug. This is the key advantage for unit testing. When a test fails, you know exactly what failed. That's another round for TDD. Just as an aside, here's one for you to ponder. You're responsible for a major system. It has excellent test coverage with a full complement of unit tests and a full complement of behavioral tests. A major deadline is looming and you're gearing up for a release. Vexingly, there's one failing test. And the dev team say they won't be able to fix it in time for the planned release. Two questions for you. Question one. Do you cross your fingers and toes and go ahead and release to live? And question two, does your answer to question one depend on the type of test that's failing? 
Take a moment now and write your answer to those questions in the box below. I look forward to reading your answers and hopefully sharing them in the very next episode where we'll talk more about this, of course, and we'll get back to our main event, the Clash of the Titans, TDD versus BDD. I look forward to talking to you then.